10 big mistakes you could be making right now on your reef and not even know it. Coming up. What's up guys? Welcome back to another episode of Real Reefing TV where I help you save time, money, and frustration by sharing my experiences and knowledge. And if you're new to this channel, consider subscribing. There's new content coming out every single week. Used to be for my fellow followers, for my Real Reefing fam out there, used to be every Friday. We're going to switch it up a little bit and it's going to be every Monday going forward because I'm noticing that more of you are on YouTube on Mondays. This video is all about 10 big mistakes that I see a lot of new reef keepers making in the hobby. And you know what? I think a lot of us maybe are still making some of these mistakes and can be corrected easily. So sit back, stay tuned uh, for all 10 of these because you never know which one might help you out. The first one is using poor quality water. You know what? Our tanks, our reef tanks are all about water. I mean, that is the basis of a reef tank because without water, there would be no life inside of it. Or maybe there would. Maybe it'd be like a garden or something like that. But that's not what we're here for. We're here to have fish and corals and have them healthy and thrive and just have awesome colors and all that sort of good stuff. So your water is, it has to be right, right? So you have to start with good fresh water if you are making your own which i would highly suggest you get an ro di unit which stands for reverse osmosis and deionization to get your water to near zero tds or total dissolved solids and what that does is it basically means that your water is stripped out completely um, without anything left in it except some high quality H2O and that's what we want to start our reef tanks so if you if you can if you have the budget for it buy yourself an RO unit you're looking at anywhere from $150 to $300 for a really good one I'll post some links in the description below so you guys can check those out if not that's not in your budget that's okay I know a lot of us starting out in the hobby start with a smaller tank and doing five gallon water changes um, you know, once a month or twice a, twice a month is adequate for a 30 gallon bio cube or something like that. And so you may buy water at your local fish store, which is perfectly fine. But here's a great tip for you. If you're going to buy water from your local fish store, go to that, go to the owner and ask them or someone at the store and ask them to see their TDS meter. You will want it to read anywhere from two one or zero that is it if it's at three or above you're really starting to stretch it there could be phosphate ammonia there could be some nasty stuff like copper from pipes so you do not want that anywhere near your tank it can kill it can um, give you bad nuisance algae problems and uh and it's just not good so you definitely want to start out with good water the second thing you want to have is good salt. So now we're going to turn good fresh water into good salt water. And that, you know what? It, I see a lot of us, and myself included, I bought some cheap salt to begin with. And once I started buying some nice higher quality salts, my world changed. Um, and <laughs> I know that sounds like over exaggerated, but it's really not. Um, you have no idea the kind of gook that's in a bad salt batch um, not just like you know dirt and silt and stuff like that but even like clay right um, if you've ever noticed some brown sludge in your mixing barrels I don't have any to show you but I've had some in the past and you kind of run your hand along the inside it's got this brown stuff that's actually because the salt is mined from clay mines and not um, fresh filtered salt water that um, that's really pure. So I'm not going to name out any brands, but uh, for what I don't recommend, but what I do recommend, I really love is Red Sea Salt. If it, whether you go for Red Sea Regular or Red Sea uh, Coral Pro, it's just high quality salt. You know what you're getting into. You know what's in the bag or in the bucket because they print it right on this side. And you can even go to Red Sea's website 
and put in your batch number and they will tell you all of the um, all of the parameters for that batch so you know what's in your salt mix so that is a really good uh, piece you want to start with good water now we want to start with good salt the third mistake that I see a lot of reef keepers making is that they buy fish and buy corals without researching them too often you go on a reef forum and you see people posting a pic ID this fish please that should not be happening you should know what you're buying what they like if they're aggressive if they're peacekeepers in a tank you should know what you're buying and what the feeding requirements are um, and, and, and things like that before you buy and bring it home and that also goes for corals as well but you have to research your corals and your fish before you bring them home and doing a quick search on your phone maybe going to liveaquaria.com and just checking it out or a quick google search you'll know everything you need to know within reading maybe a few sentences maybe not everything but a lot and you'll have a better idea if it's going to be a good fish or a good coral to add to your system the fourth mistake that I see happening is when new reefers start dosing their tanks before they need to. You know, regular water changes ought to keep up with most of your tank's demand for your big three, calcium, alkalinity, and magnesium, and the trace elements as well. But your, your water change, I almost said oil changes, your water changes are going to handle most of, of replacing and replenishing those elements in a reef tank unless you have a large system with a lot of SPS and LPS corals large polyp stony corals and small polyp stony corals that take up calcium alkalinity and magnesium to make up their bony structure you don't really need to do a lot of dosing as long as you're doing your uh, your water changes so if you're gonna start dosing um, if that's something that you're interested in doing, make sure that your tank actually needs it. And that starts by testing. If you see that you can't keep the op optimum levels of calcium, alkalinity, and magnesium uh, through your water changes because of your testing, um, if you're seeing that you can't keep that up, then yes, absolutely. Start dosing those elements so that you can keep a stable reef. But if, you, if you're not testing, you shouldn't be dosing what you can't test. And so that brings me to my next point. The fifth mistake that I see new reefers making is not testing. You know, they're just kind of willy-nilly, you know, putting salt in. Well, it said five cups, so they put five cups of salt in. They mix it up, they throw it in, and they think that's good to go. But please, please out there check your reef do some testing if you test once a month even maybe twice a month if you can it's going to take you five ten minutes tops to do your testing and you'll know where your reef stands you'll be more connected with it you'll be actually able to see your tank starting to grow and see how it's actually taking those minerals and uh, and those elements out of your water so it's a really rewarding process and i would just tell you test your reef especially before you start adding anything to it because you definitely don't want to start killing your corals the sixth thing that i see reefers doing stems right off of testing your reef you want to test with good quality reliable easy to read test kits i see too often people putting um you know saying that their test kits are showing them this and then they're showing them that and it's not it's just not reading up right and they can't they can't see it within the light and and it's just a problem i'll tell you there are some that are notoriously known for being inaccurate again i'm not going to name any names but what i do recommend are red sea kits salifer kits are also great they're a little bit less expensive than red sea pro and then also I just absolutely love Hannah checkers because they're so they're so easy to read and use that um, and, and accurate that they just make my life so much easier and yes they are a bit more expensive for each test kit the seventh mistake that I see reefers making is when they buy a fish they bring it home and they do what I call the bag clamation <laughs> 
acclimation where they just take a bag with a fish or a coral in and they float it in there for you know 10 minutes or so maybe they take a little cup of water they dump that in and let it sit for a little while longer then they take it right out of that bag or maybe even they take the bag of water with the fish um, and put that into your tank you are not doing yourself a favor I know I've done that in the past and that is not a good idea one thing is is that your fish store probably uses copper in their systems to keep their fish free of any parasites and so if you're dumping that into your reef tank you are going to kill your invertebrates because they cannot handle copper in the system that will kill them what I recommend is doing the uh, drip acclimation method where you actually take either an airline tubing or what I love is the innovative marine AccuDrip and it drips water into a container that has your fish or coral with the water from the fish store in it and you want to double the amount of water that you originally started with in the container with the fish or coral and then take a take a net and scoop that fish out and put it into your tank or if you are please do quarantine that fish for the right amount of time or if you're acclimating a coral after you've drip acclimated that coral then go ahead and pour in your uh, dip solution to get rid of any parasites and things that might be hitchhikers that might be coming in on that coral to kill those off and um, and then go ahead and put that coral rinse it off with some tank water into the bucket that you've used for acclimation then put the coral that's been rinsed into your tank finally but these procedures will help you one acclimate the coral properly but also keep any parasites from coming into your tank the eighth mistake that I see reefers making is that they overfeed. So once you have those fish in your tank and they're all swimming around happy, you're just grabbing a mound full of this full of food and just chucking it in the tank. Well, that can be a problem over the long term. You're going to end up with algae issues or fish deaths and coral fatalities. It's not going to be a good situation. So what I recommend is just taking a small pinch. You can even hold that food in your fingers, hold that down in the water and your fish can eat it right out of your hands. The ninth mistake that I see reefers making is that they buy cheap equipment. This just stems from, you know, lack of knowledge of what is out there and it's hard to gain that knowledge without maybe failing first a little bit. But if you go to marinedepot.com and I'll link it up down below with some of the high quality products that we use here for this build um, and, and on the 300, but if you stick with top quality brands and, and search for quality over how cheap it is, you're more likely than not going to get a nice uh, product that's going to last a long time. You know, I've bought products in the past that I thought were great deals because they were cheap, but they were cheap because they were poorly made. And that ended up in you know, me basically having to do huge water changes in my tank because they nearly crashed the entire system. So, you know, just do your research on what you do buy. And that leads us into the next uh, mistake that I see a lot of reefers making. And that's by, you know, just flying by the seat of your pants and, and not doing your planning. If I had to go back and do my first tank all over again, I probably wouldn't have done it the way I do it now because of, well, one, a little bit of the experiences that I've had with that, but also I know that if I plan it out, I'll have better results over the long term. Plan ahead and try to do it as best as you can the first time around. And my dad always said, if it's something worth doing, it's worth doing it right. I did a video on the five gadgets that you need for your reef tank and that'll help you maybe plan some things out and, uh, and really help you out with your journey as a reef tank owner. If you like this video, give it a huge thumbs up and hit that subscribe button right here. And, uh, and that video for those five gadgets will be right over here. Peace.